know we're at the point where things are slowly crashing really gave me a message I needed to hear going into 2023. of the evening where work is done but I haven't had dinner yet so I was just taking a few moments to decompress and started reading Kiss Her Once for Me again. I have about 20% left of the book and I've just reached the point in the book where everything is starting to go bad. Everything was happy and romantic and then now we're at the point where things are slowly crashing. So I'm hoping we're going to reach this point of oh no, and then it's going to build up to a nice happily ever after. I started reading this book during December when I was doing Vlogmas. I just didn't have the time to finish it. I've mentioned it before, but I'm really not someone to sit down and set aside time for reading. I really just read when I have the opportunity, whether it's I have some spare time in the morning, some spare time on my lunch break. This time between work ending and eating dinner or even a little bit before bed. But I thought it would be nice to make a little vlog to finish off this book because I was hoping to finish it in December as it takes place around Christmas, but here we are. But I guess for context, I should let you know what the book is about. Kiss Her Once For Me is by Alison Cochran, and it is about Ellie, an artist who specializes in animation, and she has lost her dream job and is currently working as a barista in Portland. She's just not having a good time in life. Her mom really sucks. She's in a lot of debt. She lost her dream job, kind of has no direction in her life, and her webcomic is not doing so great. And it doesn't help that the past Christmas she had a whirlwind love affair with this woman named Jack who she will never see again, but she is definitely still pining after Jack. Even though she has some really like pessimistic feelings towards the relationship, I think it's still something she really desires. One evening she is approached by her very attractive landlord Andrew and after spending a night together, getting to know each other, having drinks, they agree to a fake marriage arrangement. Andrew is set to inherit a lot of money from his grandfather who has passed away with the stipulation that he will only get the money if he is married. So of course him and Ellie come up with a plan to have a fake marriage and then Ellie will get a portion of his inheritance, which would really help her out because she has a lot of debts to pay and her mother is also relying on her financially. But of course, as any good romance goes, this gets foiled when Ellie agrees to spend the winter holidays, the Christmas holidays at Andrew's family's cabin where all his family members gather, his grandmothers, his mother, and his sister, who I'm sure you could guess ends up being Jack. Now this isn't really a spoiler, this all happens very early on in the book and it is part of the description, but things go from there and as you can imagine, things heat up. There's a lot of tension between Ellie wanting the money, wanting to make Andrew happy, and of course Ellie wanting to chase her own dreams by being with Jack. There's a lot going on. The book was a little bit slow for me. At first I was kind of like, I am not really digging Ellie's character, this is just kind of sad, and I... I don't know if I'm rooting for her, but as things have picked up, I think Ellie is a character who is displaying a lot of growth and I really enjoy Jack's character and getting to know all the other characters in the novel. And I really appreciate that it has some Korean American representation as well. And it is a queer novel with the two main love interests being two women. And there is another little side romance going on, which kind of results in a weird four-way romance love triangle. It's been a good read. It's been very enjoyable and I love the winter background. It's very snowy. It's very Christmassy. It's a, It's been a really fun read to enjoy over this holiday season, but now that it's January I would like to wrap it up and move on to my next book. I'm not going to give any major plot spoilers going forward. I think everything I've said about the book so far can be inferred by the synopsis of the book. I went into this book blind and 
I was really blindsided by it. I wasn't expecting this fake marriage plot. Just by seeing the cover, I didn't know there would be that kind of relationship, but can't judge a book by its cover. So I think for tonight, I am going to stop with the reading for now, go make dinner, enjoy dinner, and then I think I'll draw myself a nice bath to relax for the evening and continue my reading from there. Don't know if I'll finish the book tonight, but I will let you know my final thoughts on it later. it's time to relax with my bath. I've already filled up my bathtub with water so now all I have to do is pop my bath bomb in. This is another thing I meant to do over the holiday Christmas break but I didn't get a chance to. I bought myself a really nice smelling bath bomb from Lush. The person working in the store told me it would smell like bergamot which is like the main scent in Earl Grey tea and I love an Earl Grey tea so I thought this bath bomb would be really nice. I don't know what surprises await me. I see some gold shimmer, it's very orange. Maybe there will be a surprise inside, I guess we'll see. So I'm going to throw this in the bath and get myself ready to take the bath but in the meantime I'm going to try and do like a time lapse of this to see what appears out of the bath bomb. So let's go and throw it in. And I don't think I'll be reading my Kindle in the bath. My Kindle is definitely not waterproof, but I believe my phone is to some extent. I'm gonna double check that before I read in the bath. But yeah, let's see what this bath bomb turns into. sure what I expected, but I guess maybe I was hoping there would be another color other than orange. I guess I will enjoy my Tang bath now and get to do some reading before going to bed. Good morning, just a little reading update for you. I am currently on chapter 30, just a few more chapters left in Kiss for Once for me. I read about maybe two chapters in the bath last night. I wasn't in the bath for too, too long because I found it got a lot colder a lot faster than I thought it would. But I really enjoyed the chapters I read last night. Like I said, we kind of hit the point where it's like, oh no, everything's going wrong, everything's falling apart, and then we're kind of getting into the nice end of the novel, I believe. I know I already mentioned mentioned that I wasn't the biggest fan of Ellie's character at the start of the book, but this most recent chapter I read, I was like, oh, maybe I see part of myself in Ellie's struggles at the start of the novel. She definitely struggles a lot with the idea of planning for failure, and yeah, I can relate. It's not something I try to do, I mean, it's something I'm working on, but Sometimes it feels nice to just tell yourself you're gonna fail before you even give it a try, but I am trying to work against that this year, but yeah, those passages I read just really resonated with me, and Ellie's friend Meredith just laid out some great advice for her, and I really enjoyed it, so I'm looking forward to finishing up the rest of the novel, getting to get that Hopefully nice last romantic moment. I'm really not sure kind of what direction the book is going to take now, but I do like the place where it's in now. Sorry if this is all very vague. I'm trying to talk about it without giving too many plot spoilers. I may end up finishing it over my lunch break today. We'll see, but I will give you an update later. days later but I still wanted to share my final thoughts on Kiss Her Once for Me with you. I went into the book thinking it was just going to be a fluffy queer romance novel that takes place over the holiday season and that it would be a very entertaining read that gave me all the warm fuzzy feelings but what I did not expect was that it really gave me a message I needed to hear going into 2023. Messages don't be afraid to fail, don't plan for failure, and it's okay to take risks. The main character, Ellie, really struggles with this in the novel and the last chapters in the book really drive the point home that if you just stay stuck fearing the worst, stay stuck fearing that even if you try something it's just going to end up failing so there's kind of no point in trying, you're not going to get anything that you want and sometimes it's better to just take a risk and hope for the best without telling yourself that you're going to fail. 
And I think I definitely need to hear that. I am someone who struggles with a really big fear of failure. I'll often tell myself things won't work out before I even give them a try. I've done this with my writing. I've done this with making YouTube videos. I've done this with all different kinds of new things in life that I am afraid of not turning out. And I think it's something I really needed to be reminded of to not plan for failure and to not assume failure. I did really enjoy the romance aspect of the novel, but I think the biggest thing I'm taking away from it is this message of don't be afraid of failure. Even with me putting that video out with my goals for 2023, I was still kind of thinking like, well, maybe I shouldn't put this video out because what if I fail at achieving my goals? What if I don't succeed in doing any of them? And I'm still scared of failing, but I know if I don't try, things aren't gonna change. And I, and I think I've proven that to myself a little bit in these past couple of months of what I'm able to achieve and I know that if I don't try, if I don't just put myself out there, even if I do fail, even if I don't succeed, at least I'll have gained something from the experience on the way and I definitely think Kiss Her Once for me really highlights that. I did enjoy the romance overall, it was a very nice fun little queer romance and I liked that the book ended on a positive note and I really appreciated the ending to the book. Initially I thought it was a little bit abrupt but after kind of reflecting on the ending I think it really drives the whole theme of the book I won't give any spoilers, but if you do read the book, I promise you it is a good read from start to finish. And I really enjoy reading the author's acknowledgements at the end of any novel, any book. This acknowledgement is no exception to that. I thought Alison Cochran wrote some really great words. I especially loved her shout out to Taylor Swift. But I wanted to share a little portion of the acknowledgements with you because the words that she wrote just really, really touched my heart and I just want to put them out on this video and I hope that's okay. Of course, full credit to the author, but I'd like to read them to you now. She writes that if, like Ellie, you find yourself frozen by fear, afraid to share your story and yourself, please know I've been there too. And there is joy and connection on the other side. Like, wow, <laughs> I needed to hear that. And I know that if I don't take these risks, and I think, you know, it's the same for you. If you also struggle with the feel of failure, it's okay to put yourself up there. And I'm gonna leave it at that. That concludes my little reading vlog for I guess the first half of a novel I've read this year. Would definitely recommend Kiss Her Once for me. If you're looking for a fluffy read that also goes a little bit deeper into themes of fear of failure, fear of being rejected, and for very hot female bakers. I don't think I've mentioned that yet, but Jack, Jack is a very nice baker. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I would love it if you left me a like because it lets me know that you enjoyed watching. And if you want to leave me a comment, let me know what you're reading or do you think you would read Kiss Her Once for Me? Thanks for spending a little bit of time with me with this vlog and I will see you in the next one. Bye!